Okay, time to preview round 11, boys, this week. EDFL football, cracking round we've got, and Division 2. Let's start some big games and none bigger for Coburg Districts. Taking on Roxburgh Park, two of the informed sides of the competition at the moment, and two sides battling now for that uh, top four spot. Coburg Districts season has turned around the last couple of weeks since that big win versus Mooney Valley. Then uh, won an eight-point game uh, last week. And now all of a sudden, uh, at home versus Roxburgh Park, a young, improved Roxburgh Park. Michael Kildy has been very good, the ex West Meadows player. This is going to be a cracking game of football, guys. I think uh, Kobe Districts at home are a hard team to, to beat, but I just like Roxwood Park, the run, the camaraderie, a lot of homegrowns there. It's going to be a great game. And even though Big Tarek Magani, good friend of mine, an ex-panel member with you on EDFL knows football back in the day, uh, I like Roxwood Park and a Possibly an upset here, even though they're on top of Kobe Districts. Kobe Districts at home now, we see how good they are. And this is going to be a cracking game, but Roxburgh Park, just for me. Your thoughts, Nick? Uh, you haven't seen much of Kobe Districts. I uh, saw Roxburgh Park last year, so I uh, have to stick with Roxburgh Park for this week. And uh, Luke? I'll go Kobe Districts, mate. I reckon Ronnie Rooney will get him up for this. Uh, they'll have a big month. I reckon they'll, uh, they will make the finals in Division 2. That's a big call, Luke Kinnabarra, but always known for the big calls. East Sunbury at home versus Jakarta, uh, seventh versus, versus eighth. But this Jakarta side has not been disgraced in uh, Division 2. They've been really impressive. And East Sunbury finding their feet at home. They, they might get a bigger crowd than usual because it's a chance to win. They see it, and uh, they're improving each week. And Casey Whelan, uh, your ex-coach as well, uh, a great coach and, and doing a great job. He is, yeah. I think... Um I still think Jakarta win this one. I think first time around they beat them pretty comfortably, Jakarta. Um, Matty Sacco coaches them, I think, this yeah, year. Yeah, doing and, a great um, job, isn't he? Doing a good job with their kids, and I think uh, Jakarta will win this one. And really like the attitude of the Jakarta Footy Club this year. And Michael Russell, our DFL uh, relations manager, has done a great job with Jakarta. East Sunbury, can they get their first game? Yes or no? Uh, no. Win their first game was the question, but good, uh, good work. Killer Park at home versus Hillside, and I did the match of the day with Adam Saracoglu this time, uh, first time around this game, and Killer Park were touching up Hillside in that first half, but Hillside uh, threw a psycho health and uh, dominated the second half and won a close one. Jake Thomas kicked five that game, and look, Killer Park at home always have a home ground advantage. I remember playing against them in A grade a, a decade ago, and God, that win was tough, and look, they, they've... Season's been up and down. They've been, had some impressive wins, mm. and then they've had some average ones. But I just think this Hillside um, side is special. Um, I think they're very good on field, and they've got such a good forward line with Edwards and, and Delizia and a couple of these other guys who can kick goals. And I just think uh, Killer Park at home will give a close contest, but Hillside very hard to beat. You know, Killer Park's clearly got you know a lot of homegrown players back this year, which has been great for them. Uh, but I still think... Hillside of the side to beat, as you mentioned before, Delizia, I think, you know, he's come back in the last couple of weeks, been terrific. He missed a month of football, I think, through injury. Yep. Um, you know, ex soccer player or soccer, soccer star, really, um, as, a, as a junior. He so played the Australian under 21 side yeah. or something. So clearly a talent. Uh, him back in the side, you mentioned Edwards. I mean, he's come out of the amateurs the last few years, an experienced head. Um, Brian Hargrave as well, playing Division 2. Hargrave are helping, you know, I mean, these guys are still, you know, get it. Get a kick in Premier Division clearly. So I mean, Hillside will finish on top, I think, this year, and, um, and they should make an easier count of Killer Park. Another good player, Jared Catania, should have a good matchup versus Kuleriotis. Uh Your tip for this one, uh, Division Two. Yeah, look, same as Kenner. I think that uh, the top end players of Hillside would uh, would make them competitive in, in Division One at the moment. So uh, yeah, expect their season to continue on. Expect the big credit, Keelor Park. And East Keelor at home versus Mooney Valley. The replay of the 2012 first ever Division Two Grand Final. East Keelor are always a better side at home. And they play that ground well. They've got some quality. Uh, especially, I love Con Grant. It's a very good football. I put him in the top 10 uh, of my top 50 this year. Uh, got some really good home grounds as well. Um, but Mooney Valley, I just think the shock lost two weeks ago versus Kobe Districts so will uh, find them hard to beat. And I think they will win this one in a close contest. Yeah, definitely, Matty. I think Mooney Valley's been terrific. Um, you know, it's two ex, an ex Abbas Reserves Premiership player playing at East Keeler. Danny Lysart's been yeah. good for them this year. Mooney Valley's got. You know, we're pretty pretty sad to probably lose one of their one of their better players this year, Marcus Considine. I think he's been terrific for Mooney Valley this year, along with Tanner and the other guys. I think they're a, they're a really good sort of young up and coming side, Mooney Valley, and they should they should make an easy can of East Keeler up at East Keeler on Saturday. Got some good goal kickers too in Johnson and O'Brien. East Keeler versus Mooney Valley. Do you know much about these two sides, Nick? Uh, no, but uh, Mooney Valley race course here. Yeah, spend more time at the race course than the uh, than the footy club down there. But uh, yeah, I'd be picking Mooney Valley in this one based on their form and uh, hopefully their easy game last week against East. 
Sunbury doesn't uh, doesn't affect their chances this week against East Keeler. Charlie Denaro doing a cracking job for the Mooney Valley Football Club. Okay, Division One, and what a cracking competition it is. Uh, one sorted game: Northern Saints at home versus West Meadows. How do you see this, Nick? Yeah, look, seeing uh, seeing West Meadows on the weekend, they're uh, they're struggling a little bit for their depth at the moment, and uh, and our boys were too good for them, and uh, and expect Northern Saints to uh, to do the same this week too. The amazing thing is they've gone and beaten West Cobra at West Cobra. The week later, West Cobra beaten you guys, Premiership favourites. So, could it be mental for West Meadows? Look, I just think that's where uh, where Divi One is at the moment. Uh, although the top four sides have separated from the bottom four, um, as we've seen uh, from Glen Roy's perspective, uh, lost to West Coburg and uh, and were down by six goals to Craigieburn, who were both in the uh, in the bottom four. So I think on any particular day, um, anyone can beat anyone in Divi One. And uh, yeah, it is mental. You can come with the right attitude to play and uh, should be able to get the points if you do so. Quick tip for you, Luke Kinnebarra. Uh, Northern Saints, too much firepower, and the Caruso boys have just been dominant this year. So. They've been really good, and Abdallah and these guys playing good football as well. Craigie Boone at home versus Hadfield. Craigie Boone, could they get uh, their second win for the season? Uh, desperate for a win. Well, it was their only win, wasn't it, I think, this year? It was, it was against Hadfield. So, you know, up at Craigie Boone's always a tough ask. I don't know whether they're up at Highgate or, or at uh, Aiken. Aiken, Aiken Reserve, but... Um, Either way, I'll, I'll stick with Hadfield, I think. It, Hadfield, for, for a side that's sort of, I think, is sitting six, they're one of the, the sides that they're always capable of knocking off a top mm. two or three side. Yeah, they're yeah. physical, they've got some good homegrown players. And look, Craigie Burn, uh, I've got a soft spot for, for the Eagles, but just they've lost so much firepower and they're in a very strong Division One competition. It's going to be a great game of football. Bryce Small's in good form this year, and uh, I just think uh, Hadfield at home may get the chocolates here in a close one. Yeah, look, agree. Uh, from all accounts, uh, Paddy were competitive against Northern Saints last week. Uh, if they can bring that same attitude and uh, and the same willingness to try to uh, to get over the better sides, I think that they would have too much firepower for Craigie Burn, who are, are struggling a little bit at the moment. Another cracking game, Tullamarine at home versus West Coburg. Tullamarine on top, great form, may get some players back as well. West Coburg uh, have picked things up since the Glenroy win. They've got some good players, young... Uh, um, Sorry, young Borg, uh, I think, hit four goals. I think your surname was. Uh, they've got some really good young players that bought into the side, as well as some of their homegrowns who have been pretty solid over the last year. Hopkins uh, got injured a few weeks ago. It was a big loss in their ruck. But uh, Tullamarine, uh, very hard to tip against, and I can see them getting another win. Oh, I totally agree with you. Your old club. My old club, that's right. Uh, Justin Marcy, I think, had a terrific year for him. He has. Um, you know, probably was... And Johnny Tate fit as a fiddle this yeah, year. Yeah, he has been. I mean, he's had, like, four clubs, I think. Johnny, Keeler, Greenvale, Strathmore and Tuller. But, um, yeah, I think Tuller got the chocolates here. You know, they've probably probably had the wood over West Coburg over, you know, probably you go back to that 2003 year, I reckon. There's, um, you know, they've probably won most of those contests. Um, plenty of experience there. You know, Ash will know every, every position that the West Coburg boys are going to line up in on Saturday. And um, I think they'll get the money on Saturday. You've seen both of these clubs. How do you see this game going? Yeah, look, it's hard to ignore uh, West Coburg's form from uh, from our game a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Cleary was good up forward with, uh, I kick, think, kicking five that day. Um, but it's hard to go past Tuller Marine. Ash, Ash Manning keeps just getting the best out of uh, out of Tuller. And uh, I guess based on form, yeah, Tuller, I'd expect to get the chocolates this week. And both totally opposite home grounds. West, Co West Coburg got the, the bigger version of a soccer ground. Tuller Marine got a, probably the biggest ground in Division One. Yeah, look, it's uh, and when we played West Coburg, their ground was uh, was pretty much underwater and full of mud uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, if uh, if Tuller Marine's ground is is holding up under the weather conditions at the moment, I think that uh, Tuller's pace and uh, and too many options up forward will get them over the line. Okay, cracking game it's going to be. It's our ninety eight point nine North West FM match of the day, and it is Glenroy at home versus Taylor's Lakes replay of the preliminary final last year. Our commentary team will be Adam Saracoglu as usual, Jake Elquid, and we'll also have Adrian Jamison doing the stats. But Nick County will join them in the box this week uh, as a, a one off special guest, which we're going to rotate over the next couple of weeks. Uh, and Nick, uh, this is going to be a cracking game of football. Uh, Taylor's Lakes, you uh, you upset them last time at home. Uh, a very solid football club. Uh, they've got great talent all across the board. None better than Morelli, D'Souza, Ragusa and, and McFerrin, a very good midfield. And you, you did a really good job against them last week. I think they've picked up a little bit uh, since the, uh, the start of the season. They generally, like last year's start of the season, a little bit slower, but really uh, the business end of the season pick up. Tell me how Glenroy Football Club will win this game. 
Uh, yeah, look, thanks for the invite in the uh, in the box on Saturday. Uh, would much prefer to probably be in the uh, red rocket pocket with the uh, with the Roy boys in the corner, um, supporting uh, support the seniors. But uh, yeah, come and provide some expert comments in the uh, in the box. But I'm sure the red rocket pocket will be going well with the boys. Uh, in relation to the game. Uh, Look, against, I think Glenroy's strength at the moment is their depth. Uh, from a reserves perspective, we're probably leaving out 20 to 25 players each week. Uh, we've had a few uh, few reserves blokes head up to uh, to the senior league and uh, and play some really good footy over the last three or four weeks. Uh, so we're not really losing anything when we're uh, when we're rotating players through. Uh, it's keeping everyone honest for spots. Uh, and I think the additions of uh, of blokes like Cronin, Skibberus, um, Shrimpton this year, uh, and as I said earlier on with uh, with Kai up forward just with the potency that he has giving a little bit more flexibility to, to Woodhouse to run around and uh, and I hopefully if it's a dry day um, I think that's going to hold us in good stead uh, from Taylor's Lakes perspective yeah look they uh, they managed to knock us off uh, first round of the finals last year so there's a bit of a revenge there uh, we did extract some uh, the start of the year uh, up at Taylor's Lakes uh, but as you said look I think that they are a stronger outfit at the moment um, but I think that our blows are, are gelling together now and uh, and look hitting their straps uh, with with the business end of the season coming really important game uh, I think that the side that can win still has a double chance um, available to them if they don't win you're back in the pack a little bit you might still have people clipping at your tails for uh, for the fourth spot so really big game um, well deserved the match of the day and uh, look really hope the Roy's can get over the line yeah it'll be a massive crowd down there as well um, Glen Royce forward line I mean we, we both Involved, I'm involved with all three divisions, you and Premier, but you just see quality like Woodhouse, Whitnell if he's fit, Kite, and then some really good mid, uh, mid-sides forwards. I mean, they've got such a good forward line for a Division 1 side. Yeah, no doubt, Matty, and I think probably Big Red's been had, had a quiet year compared to his other years at Craigie. But, but still and, takes the best defender. You've right, you got to put him on you know? Lance. I mean, Kite's kicked, what, 50-plus goals this year so far. Woodhouse has been a good player of Premier Division and obviously, you know, at, at his time at Glenroy, so... But having said that, I think Taylor's Lakes have got plenty of five PI. They've probably got an even more even spread of, uh, yeah, goal of, kickers. of goal kickers. You know, I know a couple of their blokes are overseas at the moment. They'll be back before finals. Um, you know, there's big rumours about a couple of big ins this week for them. But well, former male model, West Coburg plays, played a few other clubs as well. Uh, Benny Power, um, a mid-year si- signing for Taylor's Lakes, and, and you know he'll be a good recruit. Unsure if he'll be in the ones this week, but no doubt will make an impact. Yeah, certainly a good player, been a good centre forward. You know, yeah, days that have no heights and. Um, and West Coburg, uh, and I think he's even had a stint over in some of the Western Region leagues at the time. But uh, yeah, I think I think Glen Roy should get the money here. Uh, I think the top four in in Division Division One's pretty much yeah. dished up. It's just a matter of where they'll finish. As I said earlier, I think Tuller will finish on top, and probably Northern Saints at the moment will probably you know hold down that second position. So it's just a make up of you know Glen Roy win this one, they can do it over the next month. I think. Maybe maybe push for second spot. Yeah, it should be a cracking game. Uh, Glenroy just for me at home. Get down there. Don't forget 98.9 Northwest FM live on radio 2 o'clock till 5. Nick County joining Adam Sarakoglu and the team. And uh, Stephen Burns, a very good friend of mine. So harder tip against Taylor's April. It'll be a great game of football. But let's go to Premier Division and the uh, the Premier Comp in Victoria outside the VFL. Cracking games all across the board. And this one is uh, going to be an absolute belter. Your side, Aberfeldy, taking on the inform Airport West Football. Club Hogan back as well. Walsh in good form. Urquhart now finding his feet after four games. Marcus Kenny, easily the most dominant forward in local football. I ask you, he's sensational at the moment. Daniel Harris, this side of Airport West are in form at the moment against an Aberfeldy side who has had an unbelievable season, bar in the last fortnight where they lost against Marby Park, just got over the line against eighth Essendon due to stars, and have some quality injured or playing Essendon VFL. Yeah, no doubt about that, Manny. It's a massive game for us uh, on the weekend. I think, you know, I, I think it's terrific that Airport West are back in Premier Division. I mean, it's back where they belong, really. They've been a Premier Division club for a number of years until they went down in the early 2000s, and um, they've clearly stabilised their club. Um, they've got some great people around the footy club. Clearly, Adam's sort of leading them in the right direction. Um, added some, you know, great quality to an already strong list from last year. Uh, Kenny's just a terrific player, you know. I mean, he, he went down against us in the first five, five minutes after he kicked two. Um, so you know we didn't have to really contend with him the first the first time around. Um, we got away from that by six go- uh, with a six goal win, I think it was for memory. But um, you know they've they've improved out of sight as the weeks have gone on, and you know 
got a feel for what Premier Division's like. Um, they've got enough experienced heads. Clearly, I'm not going to tip them against my own side. So, um, you know, we'll have a few blokes back this week. Um, you know, we have had, you know, the likes of Josh Toy and Dave Fay, Zach O'Brien's been up and down from Essendon and, and, uh, and Young Tipper as well has been terrific for us. So it's good to have that injection of experience and, and yep. quality. Can I ask you about Tom Hislop? Where is he at? How bad is his injury? When can we see him back? Uh, Tommy's Tommy's certainly heading in the right direction, you know. I mean, he hasn't missed a session since he's been hurt. He's just been fantastic for the club since he come down from the AFL. Set standards for the group from a training perspective. Um, his brothers have been terrific as well for the football club. Every everything he's brought to the table has just improved the football club. There's no doubt about that, Matty. And you know, he'll be back in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, there's no there's no doubt he does everything right to his body to get himself right. Um, he, work, he, he genuinely works as hard as I've, anyone I've seen at local yep. level, uh, and you know he's. Yeah, I mean you saw what he did in that final last year. He, he nearly got to uh, before he had a jar at final single handedly. He was unbelievable. Yeah. I mean I've never seen anyone hit a hit a contest like he did when he ran on the ground. You know after he'd come on, yeah. uh, he, put, he shouldn't have been playing, but he did. Had a massive impact in that final. He was. Um, you know our, our last fortnight has been tough, um, but the but the club's a different place this year. Yep. It's just been fantastic. It's all it's all all things are chugging along quite nicely. So. And the great man, big male Michael. I'd personally love to see him just get back on the field. He's been doing a few sneaky jogs. My male is strong as an ox. Absolute champion AFL player, champion bloke. I'm glad he's coaching in EDFL, and I'd just love to see him sneak uh, sneak back into that side. I know he doesn't want to take the the spot of a young guy, but. He's just such a smart, good player. Is there any chance of Big Mel coming back? Well, funny you say that, man. He actually did have a run on Saturday with us in the twos. He did, there yeah, you go. I did. thought that was his name. I wasn't sure if it was yeah. just a little shifty from yourself or your coaching staff, no. which we hate at the EDFL, yeah. but I'm glad uh, he did, mate. I'd love to see the big fella play. And he did tell me that uh, the Billy Brownless look like from Maryland Park, Lachlan Thompson, who's the son of Len Thompson, who surprised him kicking five goals, who's a right. thick set. Yeah. Mel actually said to me after the game, I think oh, I might have to put the boots on because I would have been a decent matchup for him. Uh, yeah. Funny enough, and you've said that, but I'd love to see Mel play, and uh, it's going to be a cracking game this week. I don't think we'll be playing in the ones against Airport West, but uh, Aberfeldy for me, just, but what a cracking game for viewers this is going to be. A quick tip. Yeah, look, saw a lot of uh, Airport West last year, but uh, still think with the calibre and uh, that Abbas have got, and uh, they want to upset fellow panellists, Kenna. The two parks at the moment, Oak Park versus Maranon Park. Oak Park's form last week, I mean, you lose by 10 goals, you say, but they lost against a very strong Greenvale by 10 goals against Maranon Park. Oak Park match up well against Marby Park, and even though Marby have been exceptional the last uh, month, and even surprised me, my old club, but losing 18 players, having uh, one of the probably lower three budgets now in Premier Division, Holland uh, is a good mate of mine, he's just doing an exceptional job, and uh, they're playing for each other, they're young, they're fit. Uh, they, got, they listen apparently to, to their coach very well and that's what he said, he said I just love a young group that really embrace what I've got to say got some physicality as well um, and got some class too with, with Anthony and Slade and these guys, I think they'll be too strong for Oak Park but I, I expect Oak Park to give them a tough hit out. Yeah I mean as you said Manny, I think Dutchie's been terrific to stick around and do what he's done this year, you know they've had a really good fortnight clearly they've got almost a whole new team Yeah um, and and um, and last year they had, I think, Lee led their goal kickers. Livingston, you know, was up there. You know, I mean, I know Trent Lee's still there this year and brought his brother across. But um, they've just had an even spread, particularly the last fortnight. I don't think Thompson played on the weekend against Strathmore. Yeah, yeah, it was out. Um, but, I mean, they've had, they've beaten us. They've beaten Strathmore. Um, you know, they, they go into Oak Park. Their percentage is going to be a struggle at the end of the year, I think, if they do win, you know, yep. the you know two or three of the next four they've got. Uh, but, you know, they're going to push for finals now after the, after their last, last couple of weeks. And a big inclusion too, getting son of uh, Johnny the Mac McNamara, uh, Jack Solomon McNamara, played in their flag in 2010 as a 16 year old, went to Calder Cannons in 2011, uh, 2012 last year got a job, went to St Bernard's but uh, the Marby boys have got him a new apprenticeship uh, his mates play these, his junior club uh, from under 14s and kick five so uh, he's all of a sudden a big inclusion for Marby Park. Yeah no doubt mate he's, you know, Jack was a terrific player back in that final I remember him um, up against Keel I think it was at Coburg that day, he just dominated that final uh, so good to get him back, clearly had an impact on Saturday and you know they're heading in the right direction Marby so yeah really really happy uh, for the Marby boys uh, quick tip yeah Marby for me need to keep their season continuing so uh, yeah Marby good to have uh, you tipping a bit of Premier Division Nick and uh, Keelor versus Greenvale grand final replay from 2008 uh, two sides with some good strong rivalry the Keelor boys at home, always a better side, but uh, look, you know, lingering there in three wins, even though technically they've had the four, um, sitting there in seventh position, in my opinion, would uh, be top two in most, or top three in most divisions across Victoria, that could have a side. Coached by the master, Mick McGuan, can they beat Greenvale in a big upset? 
I'm going to tip Keeler this week, Matty. Uh, they, I think last time they played Greenville, they only went down by a couple of kicks. Yeah, and, six and should goals, have won. Six goals, 20, very physical Yeah, contest. and kicked one eleven, I think, in the first quarter. It was yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, they are in the game, the whole game. So they just didn't kick straight that day. Mick clearly is the, you know, the premier coach in the league in terms of strategy and the rest of it. So. Got good support with uh, Jimmy Condos and Anthony from New York uh, half hour as well. Yeah, um, and I think Aaron Willoughby's down there giving him a chop yep. out too this year, former Abbott Abbas and Greenville boys. So, look, I'll, uh, I'll tip Keelan and upset this week. I think they can't make finals at this stage. I think they're too far beyond. They can shape it. But they can certainly shape, shape the four. So yep. I'll, uh, I'll tip Keelan and upset this week. James Rowan versus Garth or Capasana might get the job. That's going to be a great duel. Greenvale just for me, but uh, this is going to be a great game, as Kenneth said. Yeah, look, I'm a favourites man, so we'll uh, we'll stick with Greenvale this week. Beautifully done, Nick. And uh, our next one is Strathmore at home versus Essendon Duda Stars. Two sides who definitely don't like each other on and off the field, but it's great healthy rivalry in the NFL. Essendon Duda Stars upset Strathmore last time. Two points, yeah. uh, It was a massive game, but at Strathmore at home, I think... Uh, they get back Jordan Doring, they get back Dale May, and they come off a loss versus Marby Park. I think Matt Little may go back to Essendon Judy's. He's a, an exceptional player. Saw him in the commentary box with Adam Saracoglu, and we just were uh, shaking our heads how good he was in that first half. I think Strathmore just for me. Essendon Judy starts with their season over in Strathmore, fighting for a final spot. The urgency goes up a little bit, and they should get the chocolates here. Agree, Matty. I think uh, Strathmore... In, in, in that mix of those four or five sides who need to make finals, they'll also struggle with percentage. Yep. The only one who's got a strong percentage out of that group is Avondale Heights. Yep. I think Strathmore need to, need to clearly just win games, and I think they'll win on Saturday. Uh, they'll be reeling from that two-point loss earlier in the year. When they were, I think they had them on toast, dude. It's three or four goals yeah. they got overrun. So Durings just, you know, so a sensational player. I mean, he kicked 60-plus last year, and he's hardly played this year. So him back in the side makes it makes a massive difference for, difference for them. And I, I don't see Dudas having a match-up for him. Yep. So I think I think Strathmore will win on Saturday. Nick uh, should be a cracking game. Strathmore, you got some mates there. Yeah, look hard to uh, hard to see the calibre of the Strathmore blokes getting beaten on the weekend. I uh, just think they've got too much depth and uh, yeah, too strong all across the park. And last game, Pasco Vale at home versus Avondale Heights. Um, this time last year, they were sort of reversed. Avondale finished um, ninth and, and Paco sort of bordering in the finals. It's very similar at the moment. Uh, Paco, again, on that smaller ground at Pasco Vale, at Rayburn Reserve, always better. Haven't been far off in a lot of games either, but I just think this season's over, uh, unfortunately. Um, but, they, again, they can knock off a side like Avondale, but I just think Avondale's form is uh, in the right direction and they'll get the chocolates here. Yeah, Avondale have had a great year, Matty. And um, as, I, as I said earlier, the firepower with Rose and Dimitrino, I think, is, um, has just had another dimension to them. Johnson, when he plays, just gives that experience of the group. And clearly, uh, clearly Pascoe Vale, I think, have struggled for goal kickers this year. And, yeah. You know, Nolan's um, hasn't had the year he's it's had getting, getting tagged, yeah. Pre previously gets picked up. Clearly, they know he can, um, he can score heavily. Um, they've missed Bannister, yeah. I think, this year. Um, and Bannister Bicer could go forward and kick goals last year yeah. and they probably just missed that from their midfielders um, I mean Featherson's the other one too is a very good and Tidell if he's playing good really helps yeah, him yeah no doubt about that but um, I can't say Avondale getting beaten on, beaten on Saturday so. quick uh, tip for this one yeah look Paco being competitive but uh, yeah Avondale for me should be a cracking game guys thanks for having you I know it's been a longer show than usual it's been great to have a little panel of three uh, Nick County what would you like to say before uh, your big commentary uh, debut this week to, to all the Glenroy people Oh, yeah, look, the club's going really well at the moment. Lance got the boys uh, boys flying, and let's uh, let's continue that this weekend. So looking forward to a big week. Mate, great to have you from your Quest uh, Mooney Valley uh, Hotels there um, to come across here and uh, and be on EDFL TV. Thanks, Nick County. And also uh, on 10 o'clock a.m., Luke Kinnabarra, one of our favourite shows, EDFL uh, radio show, generally with Adam Papel, Matthew O'Connor, and we might have uh, Dylan, um, the great umpire, on it again this week. He's doing a sensational job. But join that on 98.9. FM, Northwest FM, 10 o'clock to 11. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of the Mooney Valley uh, Race Club, we, we love having you guys sponsoring EDFL. No, I appreciate the opportunity, Matty. It's been really good. Um, always good to have a chat about football. So thanks for having me. And anything to, to all the viewers watching this uh, for functions and, and, and all that sort of stuff, what would you like to, I suppose, ask us to get future business for Mooney Valley? I mean, just follow our website, you know, www.mvrc.net.au. Just follow the links on there in regards to our function business. Engagements, weddings, all that sort of the stuff. A whole lot, Matty, outside of the racing arena and our you know, sporting back Cox Plate Carnival. We clearly do over 500 functions every year. That's so a busy business. Plenty of rooms to rooms to choose from, and um, give us a call, and we'll look after you, mate. You always look after me with a VIP uh, members card or marquee every year, mate. But appreciate that, Luke. But thank you for joining us on EDFL TV. I'm Matt Pilios, Nick County, Luke Kinnabarra, EDFL TV. We'll see you next week. Thank you.